Welcome to Let's Roger That. I'm Gilles. Today, let me show you how I installed a tachometer on my milling machine. Let's go. Okay, now I want to install myself a nice tachometer to know how many revolutions per minute my spindle is like traveling at. Um, so, I'm just looking at the mill here, and there's this warning plate here. I'm thinking, hmm, that gives, I know that gives me access to the spindle area and the inside of the casing, so let's see if I can put it there. Took off, took that off, looked at the size, hey, it looks pretty good. So I just carved it out a little bit. There's two side latches on this thing. Connection comes out the bottom. All right, so I made these two openings in order to latch this in place. Now you can remove all this, you can actually do the work without struggling. That comes off, just loosen up these screws and this just pops right out. So here, if you look at the back, that'll fit in there. Let's latch, latch it together, great. And that'll give me enough space for my wiring. Okay, great. The wire connection is gonna be made there. Now we need to figure out how we're gonna get this through the mill and out of this, the, the side here, all right? So let's look at that. We need to get the wiring done. And there's really two things that need to happen here. There's two, there's two sets of wires that we need to route through this whole thing. Now there's, there's the power supply wires that need to come in and power the LED. And of course, then uh, part of that wiring somehow needs to go up to the top because we got a sensor that's going to have to come here somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where, but we know the wiring can go through here because that's where we had the power wire go through before and that leads directly out. So we can have our power supply connected somewhere, perhaps in the box, don't know yet, and power and being routed through here with the rest of these wires. Come up here, one set's gonna go, pardon me for a moment, one set's gonna go up here in the hole, up into here to deal with the sensor. And then the rest of it will come through here for our monitor. Now I showed you earlier, we have a five amp power supply here for 12 volt DC. And currently it supplies the power to here. Uh, ultimately, I'd love to wire this fan to come on through this relay here on the VFD. And that might be a way to power the uh, tachometer at the very same time. So I'm gonna come up, so I'm gonna draw a diagram in order to do that. All right, so let's continue the tachometer installation. And what we've got here uh, in here, I've got my cable for my power supply, which is here, not connected at the moment. And I ran another wire underneath here, which is going to the mill. Now in here, I wanted to be able to power uh, my tachometer and the fan at the same time from the same power supply. So I've got that connected so that would be possible. And the other thing is I've got them hooked up to this relay here on my VFD. RA and RB are relays. It'll let you put power through up to one amp. They're definitely not one amp going there. We're talking about milliamps. So this is the power going in and the power going out. So as soon as I've got a program so that as soon as the VFD comes on and is powered, that this circuit is closed and allows power to go through my fan and my tachometer. At the mill side of things, here's the box and we've got a wire coming all the way here and I've got it 
going up into the pulley cover. Really, really simple. Now this is a two wire cable. Inside the cover, I've got my power cable coming up that hole. Now, what we need here uh, is uh, four additional wires in order to one, power and send the signal from this sensor to the tachometer, which is here. So as I showed you earlier, I routed this these two cables into this housing here because it's this is wide open right there's no moving parts and so that means you can bring your cables up to here get it all wired up and put your tachometer right here in place which is great now without looking at any of this wiring stuff here you see i made a bracket this is a homemade bracket using stuff that i had right so I used 22 gauge uh, sheet metal and I made this because you have to be within uh, at, at the very most 12 millimeters away. Um, now I've calculated this and it actually works. It says uh, the instructions actually call for a tenth of that, but uh, I, I, didn't, I wasn't very comfortable with having it quite that close. So my bracket consists of this, uh, consists of 22 gauge uh, sheet metal. I've made the appropriate bends, a couple of screws down there. And I welded this angle bracket here quite simply to stiffen up that vertical riser. So now it's nice and, and sturdy. I've got my sensor here. The sensor has three wires um, and I'll show them to you in the diagram. So now you've got that and I've epoxied the magnet here just like everybody else does and uh, make sure the epoxy is set before you turn the spin mill on. Okay, so just for the sake of the demonstration, I've activated my VFD and as you can see, my tachometer is on. Now I just want to, the reason I'm doing this because I wanted to show you here at the back of the sensors, there's an LED. And check this out. Okay. Look, when the when the magnet lines up, the LED becomes brighter. Okay? So that is a great idea because it provides you with a tool to diagnose whether your sensor is actually working appropriately with the location of your magnet. So just a little tip for you. I'm gonna show you that my tachometer works, but it is not perfect yet, and I want to make you understand uh, why. Okay, so let's turn on the mill. And I've already got my trim pots at a certain speed. And let's go to look at the VFD. VFD indicates everything in, in hertz. So you've got 41.5 hertz. Now if I increase this, say 60 hertz, let's do it. Okay, so we're at 60 hertz essentially. I'm going 830 RPMs pretty well. And currently I've got this, uh, the belt set up at, uh, let me see here, one and six, which is supposed to be 770 RPM. Okay, that's fine. Now, we don't know which one is truly accurate, but it's, it's in the ballpark. But then let's check this out. Let's reduce the speed. Say I wanna go slower. Oh, and look, my screen went blank. Why is that? Check this out. We're at 40 hertz or below 40 hertz. So let's increase it ever so slightly and see what happens. And you see there's, it's clicking here. And now we're back. Okay, so we're at 600 RPMs and we're above 40 hertz. 
So I'm figuring that the uh, there are some electromagnetic interference at play here. I've installed a couple of ferrites, but that's not cutting the mustard. Okay, so the solution to the tachometer not working right is quite simple. The relays here uh, are influenced very much by all of the other power cables that are here. So it creates interference, gets into that relay or simply the wires here that feed the power to the fan and the tachometer. So the simple solution is simply to wire a switch to from the power supply directly to the units and voila, right? Turn your switch on, fan comes on, tachometer, tachometer comes on as well. No problemo. So let's do one final test for our tachometer. Turn the switch on, our power comes on, great. Turn on the power for the mill. Give the time of the VFD to come on, okay, it's on. Turn it on. Ramp up the power. Ah, lovely. So this is really nice. Now I can adjust this thing. Don't have to worry about the frequency affecting any of that stuff. See, like, look at that. Beautiful. Very nice. So I hope that was helpful to you. Now please uh, like and subscribe this video. I always love to hear from you if you'd like to shoot me a comment. And take care. Bye bye.